Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. Today we are going to start a new chapter, Human Reproduction. As we discussed previously, reproduction or the sexual reproduction involves three stages. Pre-fertilization, fertilization and post-fertilization. Pre-fertilization events include uh, the process of the formation of gametes or that is called a gametogenesis. In plants, we learn microgametogenesis and megagametogenesis or microsporogenesis and megasporogenesis. Here it is going to be spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Followed by that, there should be the gamete transfer. So in plants, we learn pollination. Here it is called a insemination, the process of transfer of sperms into the female genital tract. Then the main event is called a fertilization where the male gamete fuses with the female gamete to form a zygote. Then followed by that the zygote will develop into embryo. Embryogenesis happens. During that time the initial stage called a blastosis. The embryo gets attached to the uterine wall and that process is called a implantation. Followed by that placenta formation happens and the baby will be there in the mother's womb developing for the next 9 months that is called a gestation period. Uh, when uh, the gestation period completes, the delivery of the baby happens that is called a parturition. So these are the main events that we are going to discuss in this chapter. Like how we learn in plants, before we start with the gametogenesis process, we have to understand the structure of the reproductive system. So let's start with the male reproductive structure. The male reproductive structure includes many parts. They are classified as primary organs and uh, secondary organs. Primary organ is the organ where the chief or the main events are happening. That means the formation of gametes are happening within the primary organ. In that sense, if you look at in males, the primary organ is testis, whereas in females it is ovary. Apart from production of the gametes, they have got one more function. They secrete the hormone also. The testis secretes testosterone, whereas ovary secretes uh, estrogen. Uh, other hormones also we will study. So basically, the primary sex organ is the one which produces the gametes. So, testis is the primary sex organ. But secondary sex organs are the other organs associated with it in order to facilitate reproduction process. For example, there are accessory ducts. Ducts will carry the sperms produced in the uh, testis to the urinogenital canal so that it can pass out. The same way, the next group of organs are a few glands associated with the male reproductive system. So the secretions of the glands have got different functions. External genitalia helps in insemination process. So let's look at one by one, start with the structure of testes. If you look at the structure of testes, the position uh, is outside the abdominal cavity. It is kept outside the abdominal cavity within a bag of skin called a scrotum. The scrotum maintains a temperature always 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius less than the body temperature which is actually required for the production of sperms. The testis actually remains within the body or the abdominal cavity when the baby is in the mother's womb. Maybe after 8 month or immediately after birth only it descends into the scrotum. So there can be a question if the uh, testis does not descend to the scrotum then what happens? Then the uh, reproduction of sperms will not happen because we told at the higher temperature spermatogenesis or the sperm formation is not possible. Now coming to the dimensions, uh, it has got 4 to 5 cm length and a 2 to 3 cm width. And it is having a tough covering outside the uh, apart from the scrotum there is a dense covering made up of fibrous tissue called tunica it has got two layers tunica vaginalis is the outer covering and tunica albuginea is the inner covering now coming to the cross section if you look at the cross section of our testes it has got many compartments or lobules inside they are called a testicular lobules each testis has around 200 to 250 chambers or lobules inside or testicular lobules present what is there within the testicular lobule? Seminiferous tubules, highly coiled tubules you can see they are called the seminiferous tubules. Inside each testicular lobule, maybe 1 to 3 seminiferous tubules can be present. So on an average up to 750 seminiferous tubules will be present in one testis. Now this uh, cells which are actually responsible for production of the sperm is within the seminiferous tubules. So the sperm production happens inside the seminiferous tubules and once they are formed they will be taken out of the tubule. 
if you take the cross section of a seminiferous tubule, it's a tube. That means it is circular in uh, out, outline, right? So you will get like this. Maybe one lobule if you take a cross section, three seminiferous tubules are cut. So you can see the wall is made up of a layer of cells that is called a male germinal cells or germinal cell layer. The cells are called a spermatogonia. These spermatogonia are diploid cells. They are actually developing into the spermatozoa or sperms. Then coming to this, in between you can see a few other cells also I have drawn. Those are the cells called as Sertoli cells named after the scientists who discovered. And the Sertoli cells are actually the nursing cells or the cells which provide nourishment for the developing sperms. So within the seminiferous tubules, the spermatozoa will develop and Sertoli cell will give the nourishment. Now you can see space in between because they are not very closely attached. There, is, there are spaces in between. This space is called the interstitial space. In this interstitial space also you can see a few cells. Those cells are called the Leydig cells. The Leydig cells are also named after the scientists. So this is the structure of a seminiferous tubule. Seminiferous tubule has the spermatogonia layer on the wall which are developing into the sperms. In between there are Sertoli cells which provide nourishment. And also in the space in between has got cells called the Leydig cells. Leydig cells secrete the male sex hormone called the testosterone or generally androgens. And it also has got certain immunologically competent cells. So we discussed the primary sex organ that is testis. Now going to the secondary organs. In that first we will learn about the accessory ducts. So accessory ducts in male includes mainly uh, regi testis, vasa efferentia, epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory duct and urethral meters. So let us start with one by one that is reti testis. Reti testis means inside the testis we saw seminiferous tubules are there. The seminiferous tubules will come out and all of them will come and form a network or tuft of tubules that is called a reti testis. A reticular structure will form. Then from that they many of them will join together to form 10 to 12 tubules. Those tubules come out and they are called a vasa efferentia. Now the vasa efferentia will join to form another duct called the epididymis. Epididymis is in the posterior part or behind the testis and it is a thick structure. Epididymis is a structure where the sperms or the spermatozoa are stored temporarily and during that time their maturation takes place and deformed ones will be removed. Then it will go out from the uh, epididymis through another duct called a vas deferens or vasa deferentia. So this vas deferens is actually going up back to the abdominal cavity. So inside the abdominal cavity it will loop around the urinary bladder and then it will receive a duct from a gland called a seminal vesicle. After that it joins with the urethra. Urethra is coming from the urinary bladder. So once the vas deferens joins with the urethra it is called an ejaculatory duct. It is actually urinogenital canal because in males there is a single opening for the passing of urine and also the uh, sperms. Okay, so it's called a ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct will open out through an opening called a urethral meters. So urethral meters is not actually a duct, it is the opening of the ducts outside. So these ducts together will bring the sperms produced within the testes to the ejaculatory duct for insemination. In the secondary sex organs, the second part is the glands. There are three main glands associated with the male reproductive system. First is a pair of seminal vesicles, then a single prostate gland and third bulbourethral gland. The secretions of these three glands constitute the seminal plasma. Actually seminal plasma is the fluid in which the sperms are uh, coming to or uh, they are mixing with. Seminal plasma consists of uh, fructose, calcium and certain enzymes. So once the seminal plasma mixes with the sperm, we call it as semen. Now coming to seminal vesicles, a pair of seminal vesicles are there, uh, which is present uh, at the top and from there the ducts are joining to the vas deferens, which is coming down from the uh, testes. Uh, then uh, prostate gland, prostate gland also secretes a milky fluid, which is actually constituting to seminal plasma uh, along with the secretion of uh, seminal vesicle and uh, it is at the beginning of the urethra and its secretion is also important for providing the medium. Then coming to bulbo urethral gland, its uh, secretion is kind of alkaline 
because uh, when uh, I told you the in male the canal is common for urine as well as sperms so urine is acidic but the sperm when passes through that it may get damaged so in order to avoid that acidity uh, the secretion of the bulbourethral gland will make that channel alkaline for the safety of the sperms and it also lubricates the penis which is uh, helping in copulation. Bulbourethral gland can also be called as cowper's gland. External genitalia of males include a structure called a penis which is the copulatory organ and uh, it has the ability to erect while copulation is happening uh, that is needed for the insemination process. So this is due to the uh, volume of blood inside it uh, and there are erectile tissues present inside the uh, penis. There is a triangular tip of the penis which is called uh, the uh, glands penis and there is a skin covering it called a foreskin. Hope you understood the lesson as well. Thank you for watching my video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.